Now, to talk to us uh, about the Africa Energy Forum, we're joined by Mtun um, Zidu <coughs> who is an energy analyst right here in the studio. Mr. Tuli, very good evening. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good evening, and good evening to the viewers. Now, why are microgrids gaining more attention at this year's Africa Energy Summit? I mean, uh, what makes them particularly relevant in the African context? Yeah. <coughs> so Maybe in the same breath, you could talk to us about, you know, what are the big takeaways so far at this summit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, ju just your first question. Micro the microgrids, the advantage of microgrids is that you can build them around load centers. Okay, so where people are, where people need power and in industries and businesses without building long transmission lines from centralized power stations to where the load centers are. Yes. So you save on the cost of building transmission lines. Mm. That's, that's the attraction of, uh, of microgrids. And given that Africa is such a big continent, which uh, even though we have a population now that is around a billion people, uh, it's still relatively sparsely populated mm -hmm. if you compare it to continents such as Europe and the United States True. or the Americas. So, 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 so microgrids bring that, um, that advantage of uh, uh, avoiding the cost of building long transmission lines. Mm, mm. And how do microgrids either challenge or complement South Africa's broader, en broader energy infrastructure, especially uh, with plans being punted of building a 14,000 kilometer uh, transmission line? Okay, <laughs> let me start with the 14,000 kilometer um, transmission line program. Uh, frankly, in my view, it's a ridiculous program. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, what they are trying to do is to connect these uh, utility scale renewable energy plants that are out in the Karoo, uh, where there is no, that there are no load centers. Yes. Okay, and because they then need to transport power from there to the main centers such as Johannesburg and other places where uh, energy is needed. Right. It's a long. So, so it, it's a long distance, and, 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 and this does not make sense. Why not build power plants close to the load centers, mm -hmm. okay? And the reason why they're not doing that is because the best uh, uh, places that have sun are in the Karoo, and so they were, they, that's where they go. But uh, overall, from a financial perspective, this does not make sense for the country from a financial perspective, but also from a, <clears throat> a technical perspective. Renewable energy sources uh, have load factors of around 25%, at best 30%. Okay? That means they only generate electricity in simple terms, 30% uh, of the time. That means those transmission lines, which are going to cost us half a trillion rand, will only be used 30% of the time. Mm -hmm. How does that make sense? to us as a country. We need energy, we don't need long transmission lines. Mm. So, uh, so it's, a, it's, 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 it's a very, very bad, ill-conceived project uh, to support uh, utility scale renewables, which uh, are privately owned. Uh, so we're using state resources to enable the entrance of private players into Got the you. industry. That Got is you. very, very raw. Got you. Yeah. And uh, now that you are pouring cold water on uh, this project of building a 14,000 kilometer transmission line, yeah. what about, you know, uh, how microgrids will serve the underserved or the remote communities which are not connected to the national grid? Yeah, so, so microgrids are precisely about avoiding to build such long transmission lines. So, for instance, where you have remote areas, whether they be in the Karoo or other parts of the country, and this is where renewables are, are, are really best suited for their application. Mm -hmm. Where you have remote areas which are far from the grid, you build uh, fr from, the, fr fr from the main transmission grid yes. in the country. You build these microgrids around those communities, mm -hmm. okay? And those microgrids can be solar or wind, or they can be hybrid, okay? okay? W which is any combination of wind, solar, or diesel generators, okay? And uh, they can then 
assist if it's a farming community they can assist the farmers to run mm, their mm. Uh, irrigation schemes and all of those kinds of things and provide basic energy uh, 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 needs mm -hmm. um, that so that is the correct application of these renewable uh, they are not suited especially in South Africa given the nature of our country the vastness of our country and uh, the 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 size of our grid they're not suited for 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 utility scale yeah yeah uh, electricity production well in my intro i did mention the national transmission company of south africa how can this company you know uh, incorporate microgrids into the long term uh, you know national planning framework is there perhaps a risk of policy or infrastructure misalignment yeah uh, look as i say you keep microgrids out, uh, you know, they, they, they tend not to be connected to the main transmission line. Yes. Uh, or the main transmission network of the country. So they, they shouldn't really have a lot to do with, uh, with, uh, with microgrid, mm -hmm. microgrids. But there's a, an earlier question that you asked <clears throat> about the, what I would consider the main outcomes of, or the, the, the big talking points. Yes. Yes. around this year's um, Africa Energy Forum. The biggest issue has been about decarbonization. Uh, the Minister of Energy uh, 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 said that uh, Africans should reject the decarbonization program, especially if it comes without industrialization. Mm, mm. Now, uh, I must confess, this was a big surprise coming from this minister. And I think that uh, he is being dishonest with South Africans and Africa in general, because the very same minister is pushing these uh, renewable energy projects. And yet he says, we must uh, 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 reject um, uh, 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 projects, renewable energy projects yeah. uh, that call for decarbonization. What, 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 Many of us have been very clear about the fact that the problem is not so much about whether we use fossil fuels or not, okay, and whether we use coal or not. The issue is about emissions. Yes. And if the issue is about emissions, and we are able to take carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide and other uh, 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 dangerous gases out of the emissions then what is the problem because the technology to do that already exists okay CCS technologies carbon capture and storage technologies they are there in fact South Africa should have invested in these technologies a long time ago okay. given the amount of coal that we have okay mm -hmm. so so if we're able to remove carbon dioxide from 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 the emissions why is it that we're told that we still can't use coal? You see? And, and the other thing is uh, 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 nuclear. Nuclear energy produces zero carbon dioxide. Mm, mm. So why aren't we building nuclear power plants? Mm. So this whole thing of uh, climate change has transitioned <laughs> from, um, from being about emissions to being about promoting certain technologies for the benefit of the people who manufacture those technologies and own intellectual property to those technologies. And it's I suppose the conversation it's... around building nuclear power plants uh, will sort of cascade into the discussion of uh, the technical and the financial advantages of building microgrids as compared to the traditional grid expansion, isn't it? Yeah, uh, look, um, there's a lot of uh, propaganda and lies that are being peddled out there about nuclear power plants. Mm. Nuclear power plants uh, have many, many advantages. They are cost competitive. Uh, as I say, they emit zero carbon dioxide. Uh, thirdly, they, uh, uh, they, they add to the general uh, 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 upgrading of the skills levels in the country. Because uh, to run nuclear power plants, you need highly skilled uh, people. True. You need industries that will service those uh, nuclear power plants. Absolutely. And those industries have to be high-tech industries. 
Uh, and so there are lots of and, and a lot of those skills that you develop for nuclear for running nuclear power plants and supporting them are exportable to other industries. Uh, such as, for instance, the aerospace industry mm, and, and, mm. and manufacturing, etc. So, nuclear power plants and the building of nuclear power plants uh, would actually be a huge benefit to, to South Africa. Mm -hmm. You see, but the, the, it's, it's, it's the political economics of the energy sector right. that is a problem here. Okay, point taken. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Just briefly, um, is <clears throat> Africa's outlook at energy generation complementing the rest of the world? I mean, how do we fare? Are we on the right path? Uh, we are not uh, uh, building enough power plants uh, uh, um, to, 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 to support energy growth in Africa. The 600 million people in Africa that have no access to electricity, 600 million. Okay. We should not be worrying about transition because when you transition, you transition from having energy to another form of energy. Right. What we're talking about here is people who have no energy. So we should be worrying about providing them with energy first before worrying about transition. Got you, got you. It's really great chatting to you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, that is um, Twin City Tudi, an energy analyst, uh, sharing uh, his uh, thoughts and uh, his reflections uh, of the Africa Energy Forum, which is still ongoing.